In a world shrouded with darkness, where hope seemed lost and despair consumed the hearts of many, a new dawn begins to break. An era ago, twelve eyes were captured by one heroic adventurer and used against the evil one in order to defeat it. But little did we know that there were more than twelve, which allowed for the evil one to return and once again rule the lands, shrouding it in darkness. Now the eyes are protected by more vicious and powerful beasts and creatures, so tread carefully, traveler. Prepare to embark on an unforgettable journey. Now you must do what was done an era ago. The dawn of a new era awaits. Are you ready to face the unknown? Embrace adventure and leave your mark upon the realm of Dawncraft. Like and subscribe if you're entertained at any point in this video because these take over a month to make. Thank you. Enjoy. Day Zero. A story would begin to be written with some poor acting. What? Where am I? And here's a bunch of world building. If you don't care for it, skip two minutes ahead. You're welcome if you don't care for it. Korok. Ale fellow. You're finally awake. Welcome to our world. You must be confused as to why you ended up here and who you're speaking to. No? Tell me about it. Well, regardless, I will begin my disquisition as I do with every adventurer summoned here. You are summoned here to defeat the Ender Dragon. Fabled beasts like giants, werewolves, and even other dragons started appearing two winters ago, wrecking havoc and disrupting the balance of our realm. Our elders told us that the Ender Dragon has been blighted by a certain malicious deity, and that both the dragon and the deity must be destroyed to bring peace to our realm. Thus, we call forth your aid, brave adventurer. Obtain at least twelve mystic eyes. Use them to locate and open the gateway into the end. Few of these eyes can be crafted, but most are held by powerful entities. We don't know who or where these entities are, but the native inhabitants might have a clue. Look for their guild masters. They are most knowledgeable when it comes to these matters. We need to get stronger, way stronger. The native inhabitants may also teach you different fighting skills, if you treat them well, at least. As a general rule of thumb, don't attack or steal from them. They are not a forgetful bunch. They are, however, forgiving if you pay off your sin through their ledger chest. Also, here, take a spirit orb. Collect four of them to upgrade your health or stamina. If you ever see one of my kind, interact with them and prove to them your prowess and intellect. They will surely give you something in return. I wish you well on your journey, my sweeting. Expect tough obstacles and roadblocks ahead, but know that they will only make you stronger. God be with ye. Dang, talk about world building. All right, I must find myself a village, so I must go north. This is quite a biome to spawn in, to say the least. It's quite empty, these lands, except for whatever the hell that is. What is that? <gasps> is that my kind? Hey, who would have thought day one I would meet some of my kind? Hello there, my fellow brethren. All right, let's get to the village. All that lore building kind of took a while. Village? Oh my god, yes. Here we are. All right, hello there, guildmaster. I'm gonna talk to you. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez, sorry. I forgot to turn on the villager translator. We should be able to understand them now. Welcome. Seems like this is your first time visiting the guild. Would you like to take on your first quest? Okay, I need to kill 10 pillagers. Got it. So, rule of thumb, you can steal as long as they don't see. That also applies to real life. Just joking, do not steal, man. But anyways, as I just told you not to do that, I'm going to be doing it in-game, which is exactly what I did in the village and got myself some armor and some food from the chest within the village. Don't want to talk to me? Racist. After being shunned by that villager, just because I'm a penguin, I continued looting from their chests and eventually got my first quest from a villager, which would come handy there. in the future. Oh, can you give me a hand? Okay. I'm lacking some feathers for arrow making. Can you fetch me two feathers? Oh, that's easy. All right, the sun's going down. I ain't risking nothing on the first day. And that would be a wrap on day zero. Alright, let's get ourselves some wood and start getting the basic tools we need. I started to chop some trees down and started to make the basic tools you need in the start of your adventure. And with the wood axe I just crafted, I got even more wood. Get ourselves some stone tools now. Now oh, that's tough. <laughs> Get it. And that joke probably went over a lot of heads, but anyways, I found a little cave opening near the village where I got some cobblestone, created myself a stone pickaxe, and got the coal that was right there. And it was great seeing a waystone within this village because these things are so useful. Crummered. Eventually I journeyed a bit away from the village area and took out this pig. 
And then within the horizon, I found another village that was way better than the one I first found. See ya! And within this village, I got myself a full armor set now, and I would go to sleep. Dude, look at this village. Oh my god, it's huge. What's this place called? Mad Crusmer. Mad Crusmer would go down as our home village. And in one of the buildings, I went up a ladder where a mob was waiting for me. And... Oh my god. I just know I can't take that thing out. I'm not trying to be negative, it's just the truth. Oh my god, someone just died. Bulwark, as Bulwark was getting absolutely annihilated by the Iron Golem, some floating mushroom started to attack me. I'm already about to die to some flying little f***. Well, I have basically full iron and does nothing. It was a long and painful process, having to constantly open and close that door, but eventually, I took out that flying mushroom. God, finally. And where the skeleton named Bulwark died, or actually, I'm starting to think, maybe it was a guard that died, but anyways, there was a crossbow with piercing one on it, so huge W. And my looting campaign would continue within the village by getting a lot more food, an iron pickaxe, some paper, and hay bales to make more bread. I then went back to the guildmaster, who I gave a piece of paper too so i could locate some pillagers now i just want to make a little house of mine just so that things don't start getting complicated with chest assortment so i think i'm going to build one right here in the neighborhood so i began to make a totally architectural i can't even say the word so obviously you know this house is going to be sh Anyways, I built the frame for it, and eventually I went into this like blacksmith area, got myself an emerald, and that'll be a wrap on day two. Day three, I started my day by clearing all the trees that were in the paths within the village, because it made it feel very claustrophobic as they were in the way. And with the wood I just got, I finished the main structure of my house. Looks like crap, but hey, we stand out. Then I got rid of the dirt within the house, added a wood floor to it. Afterwards, with the rest of my time, I continued clearing some trees, and would go to sleep. Day 4, I wandered to this little cave area that was under the village and started to collect some cobblestone and gravel. Dude, I hate the diversity thing. Whoa! Seven hates diversity? Cancelled? What this means is that you need to diversify your food, which means you kind of need to play like it's real life. <laughs> I just realized that, that that's kind of a good thing. But anyways, I got some sand and started to cook up some glass. It's gonna look like crap, but you'll see the vision when it happens. This is gonna be the next floor, so whenever we're ready to up the whole thing, we just up it. Yeah, that's a very, very bad explanation. But hey, if you see the vision, you see it. It will obviously we do because like it's vision ne never mind anyways i got this hay bales and then would call it a day day five i started adding the roof or potential second floor to my house if you got the vision the other day look at this beautiful starting college be like i'm just broke bro this sucks so i started out on another adventure towards this pillager camp and on my way i ran into this very cool looking village i got some loot within the village and would call it a night in there day six i continued my journey and ran into another village where i found this like fancy restaurant type building and within it it had very good loot i had to be reminded that a mother of a man was near this village. The thing about this village is that most of it was built on ice. I mean, how much dumber can you get than that? But anyways, I found out that this village was named Madzorkred. With all the looting I was doing in these villages, I needed to create some storage, so I made a chest in one of the houses and just dropped some things off. I then created myself an iron sword, killed some sheep to get a bed, which was super unnecessary because there was literally one upstairs, but anyways, I went to sleep. What? Me? The last thing I need to do is get in a battle with this stupid snow golem. Day 7, I started to cross the ice where some angler fish were waiting right under. And the camp actually turned out to be a pillager pirate ship. Yeah, I think I can snipe them. With the arrows I had, I started to take some shots towards them. And eventually got one of them. Nice, got one. Okay, I'll be back with more arrows. I think that's the way to go. Guys, I'm just gonna kill this guy. This guy's a pussy. Little did I know that this snowman was Jack the Cold. Okay, he's actually a boss. I'm good. Yeah, those words I said earlier applied to me. This guy's a pussy. But if there was ever a, a very unworthy way to die, it would be by Jack the Cold. After running away from Jack the Cold, I tamed a horse. So now we were best friends forever, apparently. Then I went into an undiscovered building where in the attic, there was a lot of iron ore waiting to be mined. And in one of the chests, I found these steel-touched iron boots of the current, which gave me a slight speed increase. So minor W, and then one of the houses had a surprise for me. Mother. 
I need chickens, man. So now I was just kind of on the hunt for chickens because I needed feathers for my arrows. So I returned back to Crumrid to hopefully find some feathers, but instead my morals were challenged. Feathers here, penguin. No, I can't kill it for feathers. I think I would actually go to hell for that. There is a moral dilemma in this game still. It's already day seven. God, I feel like I haven't done anything. Yeah, I was feeling super unsatisfied with my progression, but I would go to sleep and on the morning of day eight, I had a very close call. Why, man? the hell did i do iron gums can you do your bloody job now there was a fletcher who had some feathers in its chest but the guy would not stop watching me so this led to a long battle to somehow get him out of his house i should have just made up a fake eviction notice but anyways here's how that process went you like these yeah yeah you do We'll see. So the mission was failed, but hey, we'll get him next time. And in one of the neighboring houses, I found even better iron armor and a saddle. All right, I need you to get the hell out of here, like respectfully. Yes. Oh my god, I almost opened it. Let me build. A huge success. I got myself three feathers. I went through all of that just to get that. But anyways, eventually this little goblin or orc, I don't know the difference, man. I don't play WoW, stumbled into the village. And this little guy brought me to half of my health. Oh my god, I almost died. Here, here, here. And then I completed that quest that the Fletcher gave me earlier. Thanks, here are the arrows are promised. Yes! How many arrows? If you don't know, you gotta complete these quests in order to even start trading with these guys. So I was beginning the process of reaching that goal. But it was good to now have the Fletcher Guild behind my back. Anyways, eventually I returned back to that other ice village, got myself some better iron leggings, and found a diamond within one of the chests. <gasps> diamond! Loot kept on getting better and better, and in one of the attics, I found a block of diamond ore. How beautiful. Then I made myself a bed and would go to sleep. Day 9. I started by taking out this cow because I needed its leather to create my first backpack at last. I crafted some arrows, got some books, and returned to Crummerd, where I crafted a lectern, where I signed my Fletcher Guild contract so I could begin trading with the Fletchers. Unfortunately, inflation is super high with these mother. What the hell? I returned back to the home village, that's what we're gonna call this place because I already forgot what it was originally called, and I went on an absolute chicken killing spree. Alright chickens, where are you at? It's for a good cause though. I started cooking up the chicken that I got, and collected as much flints as possible to create some more arrows, and then went to sleep. Day 10, I renamed the village to Home Village because that would be easier to navigate within the Waystones. And I started to make my way back to the village that was near the Pillager pirate ship. Yeah, I actually don't like that because if, if it comes towards me here, I'm actually going to cry. Dang it. Okay, let me see what one arrow shot does. Okay, so I'm not killing that thing. Let's just get that straight. I was scared to go over the ice because it's the mother of the maze. That thing can break ice, unlike the anglers. So I had to loop around and hopefully find another pirate ship. And as I was doing that, I found a random waystone and started to tread the ice, where eventually I did thankfully find an even bigger pirate ship. Land ho. Okay, that's number two. Three. That's four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine. That's completed. Going back to my roots of Minecraft Pocket Edition right here. Bro, no, I don't care. Just let me go to sleep. But on day 11, I don't know why I wasted so many arrows on this dumb boss. Dude, I've put like 20 arrows in this mother. I'm curious, how much health? You're joking. Not even a dent. Yeah, quite an L, since I spent quite a bit of time getting those arrows, but I returned back to the guildmaster, and here's what he had to say. Hey, here's just open the book and learn the skill. If you want to get more skill books, I suggest doing some of the guards' requests. Good luck on your journey. Roll in the direction you're moving while executing the skill, you will become immune to physical attacks. What's next? Good, seems like you're ready for adventure. Ready to find your first eye? Ho oh, ho ho ho, si senor. You can be found on top of their castles. Alright, so we already gotta take out the Goblin King, and we already live near one. Carmelo, adventurer, are you good at cooking? I'm alright. So you cook a dish called honey glazed ham. Alright, you're just asking for too much. Eventually, I got myself some blocks of coal that were just sitting within the village and talked to one of the guards who gave me a new quest. Ah, uh, a bloody child. I gave the guard the piece of paper, and in return, he gave me the map to where this child was being held captive. 
For the rest of the day, I claimed rewards that basically just explain how this mod pack works, so I got some XP for that and then went to sleep. Day 12, I went out to collect more wood to create what I needed for my chicken farm, which were fences and fence gates. I did a little bit of terraforming by my house and added the fencing for my chickens, but since I had so much to spare, I also made a little area for the cows. Alright, looking nice. Now, are there any chickens here? Did I kill them all? After the massacre of the chickens, which will go down in their history books, there is only one left to tell the tale. But you are not my savior. Actually, this chicken actually is right now. So thankfully, I got it into the pen and added a couple of eggs that I stored. And man, was I lucky with the amount of chickens I got from it. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. I spent the rest of the day collecting crops and then went to sleep. Day 13, I started by taking out this brain sucker. I mean, that, that name can be interpreted many ways, but anyways, it gave me some loot I had not seen before. I went to the nearby forest in hopes to find more chickens, and on my adventure, I was attacked by this weird wolf. What the hell is that, man? You can just hear me spamming my left click. But anyways, after a bit of traveling, I did find a whole family of chickens. A whole family of them. Is that one like blind? What the hell? I oh, know, he just has eyes on the side. McDonald's is coming home, boys. So after a little while of having them follow me, I got them into the pen, where I started to breed them. There it's in the bats. After I went out to get the cows, which was quite easy since I had not massacred their whole population. And after doing that for the rest of the day, I went to sleep. Day 14, I started by collecting some gravel and ran into a guard who wanted to teach me something. Active guard, just pay me how many emeralds? 15, okay. So before I got back to that guard, I created a Fletcher's table, collected some flints, and went back to the chickens to collect some feathers. Just please give me feathers, don't don't make their deaths not worth nothing. Oh god. Okay, two feathers. Oh man. Sick, we got 12 arrows. And finally, some good ideas started to generate into my head, and I got this villager a job. Wait, what if I give one of these guys a job? They're stuck behind their thing. Yes! You can guess what it is, a crossbow? Is that what you want? A slingshot? Okay, how do you craft a slingshot? Yeah, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to complete that quest for a while, but I did end up trading some sticks with the villager and got some emeralds. All right, I'm just gonna steal this. I don't think you'll mind. Either. I then added some carpet to the pens because it makes it easier to get in and out and got this quest from Jerry. Make me a bow. I would then go to sleep and on day 15 I started my day by going into one of the attics where there was a lot of cobweb so I could easily collect some string and create the bow I needed to satisfy Jerry. I got you my guy. Boom. <laughs> Hunter trade scroll obtained. What was this? A rabbit's work? Ooh. I crafted myself another lectern, got that hunter's guild contract signed, and then talked to Carlita, who gave me a quest. So I got a piece of paper and gave it, and in return, I got a map to a haunted ruin. Alright, level up. Make your prices go cheaper. Thankfully, the prices were starting to go down. Eventually, I ran to Felicia in the village, who gave me a quest to find an iron axe, which I wouldn't get to till later. Eventually, I found the guard who wanted to teach me active guard, so I paid up and was met with disappointment. You must learn guard skill first. So I just learned something that I can't even learn. For the rest of the day, I took out some chickens, created more arrows, and then went to sleep. Day 16, I did the routine farm animal things. All right, so we journey now and save a child. I traveled from village to village using the waystones, and unfortunately, it led me to having to cross the ice plains. You know, this always reminds me of Scarecrow and Batman when he makes the citizens sentenced to death by making this walk. Oh, let me get rid of my backpack. There we go, I feel more athletic now. All right, looks like we're starting to come upon our location. On my way to the location, I got myself some sugar cane, and eventually, I found the pillager outpost. Because it was already half day, I didn't know if I was going to have enough time to take out everyone that was there, so I made a little hobbit hole within the mountain, added my bed, and then went over my game plan. Okay, so I say the tactic here is we get them low, and then we give them the final blow. Hold up. Let me tell you, this piercing crossbow was going to absolute work, since it was doing collateral damage. After crossbowing for a bit, I let a vindicator out away from the fortress, who I took out Oi, 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 it's two down. Let's track these guys here. Nice. Easy damage through this. Someone teleported. Oh, no, I see him. All right, we should have taken him out first. 
Jesus, dude. They do so much damage. For the rest of the day, I dealt with the magic archer who was invisible, but eventually I did find who the real one was. And before any mobs would begin to spawn, I went to sleep in my hobbit home. Day 17, I got mugged by the seagull. Oh, and went back to work against the pillagers guarding that outpost. And let me tell you, you do not want to be caught lacking not being in combat mode. Here's a clear example of that. I was in combat mode and almost died. Later, I got some revenge against one of the seagulls, started to go within the pillager outpost. However, it made me regret my decision. I, th that's exactly why that is the most useful thing in this game. That was a close call. All right, that Ravager is it's getting a little too close for my liking. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna finish this guy off. Hold up, hit him in his toes. After hitting those toes, I crafted four arrows with the seagull feather I just got and came up with a strategic plan to take out the pillagers that were waiting in the upper levels. All right, so we open this up and we just shoot away. My piercing crossbow made this plan all the more successful. After taking them out in the upper level, I was able to enter and started blocking out the pathways just to make sure there weren't any surprises. And I began to look around what was within this fortress. I'm not sure yet if this place is fully cleared. No, it's not. There's one. And here's another instance of me being caught lacking. I did not have combat mode on. Dude, I swear that's gonna get me killed. Do you hear the panic? clicks. Eventually, the Ravager did pick up on my scent and started to chase me. Hang on, regen. Let me regen. Thank you. I ran for a majority of the day, leading it away from the outpost, and eventually, I got back to taking out the warriors that were in the outskirts for the rest of the day. To be honest, I didn't think it would take this long to do it safely. Whatever it takes to save the child. Day 18, Fire Torch Man was waiting outside. I know it's called a Silver Beast, but at this moment, I did not know it was called that. How much damage do I do? Like nothing. Great to know. I'm just gonna leave and be. I finally made my way through the main entrance of the outpost. Where in the first room, there was quite useful loot for myself. Alright, I don't know what this stuff is, but it looks good. Eventually, I made my way to the top room. And I was expecting diamonds in this chest, but... Hey, we work with what we get. However, the task at hand was to save the child, and it was already day three of extraction. Unfortunately, the Ravager did make its way back to the outpost, so I spent the whole day shooting arrows at it while running away. I burned too much time, so I would go to sleep. And on day 19, I crafted myself a bucket and finally dealt with the Ravager. What the hell is that? Oh, that's just the Ravager. Oh my goodness. Alright, let's get you out, old man. I got the child out from its bars and started the journey back to the village. On the way back, I ran into a woolly cow, which was much needed since I had bad omen, so I drank that milk up. I also noticed an igloo, and it had the typical loot on the bottom floor where you're met with this moral dilemma to save the zombie villager, but obviously we go with the taking the golden apple and getting the hell out of there. Yeah, those guys were kind of stuck there for eternity. Eventually, I ran into the Everdon or Everbright village dimension wizard guy i'm not sure what his name is i went into his house and got the loot that was inside and eventually went to sleep day 20 on my way back i found another wild waystone and claimed my reward for getting an enchantment table and at last i brought the child back to his father amazing i actually did it to be honest i wasn't optimistic about the kid's survival here i'll teach you a new skill swords master <gasps> what? You gain a 30% attack speed bonus when using katana, longsword. Okay, I just need to make that thing then. Pretty cool. I bred the chickens once more and got this Chronicle of Shadows book for obtaining an enchantment table. It just had a whole lot of reading, so I didn't really care for it. Then I went back to Crummerd, where a farmer was asking for eight bones. So I gave Casimira the eight bones. Ah, oh, well, thank you, kind sir. Here's an emerald. That's it. And by the village, there's this little red goblin garch outpost. Not really sure what the name is for these guys besides garch, but I did take them all out and got their pretty garbage loot. And I'd label that as below mid loot. When I returned back to Crummerd, I ran into Van, who just created this random lore out of nowhere when I was just expecting a quest. But hey, world building, am I right? All right, maybe we can take out the Goblin King. I say we do that. Now I was finally in the right mindset and back on track to follow the main quest line but before that i went to sleep and on day 21 i randomly talked to my trusty fletcher who rewarded me what just happened oh 
I guess because my reputation is up. That is my best guess, I guess, since I traded with them and got my rep up. But anyways, I was happy to now see some regular and discounted prices. Okay, yeah, so next thing, we should honestly just take out the Goblin King. Okay, so since it's half the day, probably wait for the next day because who knows how hard it's going to be. Or I can just get started like a smart person would and go to sleep if I need to. Enough with the stalling. It was time to take out the Goblin King. So before heading out, I crafted a diamond sword, stocked up on some arrows, planted some sugar cane, and then made my way to where the Goblin King was staying. I'm gonna assume it's over there. Actually, I'm not. It's right over there. Oh my god, that is a bear. So once I got near the Goblin King Fortress, I made another little hobbit home within the mountain and took out some goblins until it was time to go to sleep. Day 22. I guess just enjoy some combat without any commentary. Enjoy. Oh, that got boring real quick, didn't it? You missed my voice already. But anyways, I got back to luring out the goblins from their fortress and taking them out. After taking out their legions one by one, eventually a big giant Shrek came from within. And I kind of cheesed the whole thing and thought it was a pretty easy fight, so I took a chance to take it out with my sword. But hey, you f*** around, you find out. Oh my god. Eventually, I did take out Shrek and this skilled Garch that was within the fortress. And at last, it was time to 1v1 the Goblin King on Rust. Not really though, but here's how the battle went. Alright, take your time to heal, buddy. Okay, what is this? All right, well, let's see what loot they have. A ring. When in the offhand, the ring bestows two health. Coming nighttime, let me get to my bed ASAP. And on day 23, I crowned myself. I checked out some chests I didn't get to the other day and then ran into this hiding goblin. Oh. That's actually funny. I was like, why does that chest look different? All right, so we go back. You are ready to take on the corrupted ogre. Here, the creature dwelling in the marked spot is holding one of the eyes. Before heading out, I bred the chickens and cows and started my journey towards the corrupted ogre. Oh my god. Eventually, I thought it was best to go to sleep, so I made my hole within the mountain and went to sleep. Day 24, I continued my journey, and on my way I found another wild waystone, and then found this little abandoned camp which had some cool things. Then found a broken nether portal, and here's what I got. And I know it has a Jirigami shard, I know, it's just at the time I knew close to nothing about this mod pack, and what is useful and what is not, so I am sorry if you want to punch the screen, or me, probably me, more than the screen, but hey, you can't. <laughs> Anyways, I continued my journey to find the corrupted ogre. And man, I was starting to get fatigued from all the travel because I was traveling far. After traveling all day on the ocean, I found this traveler who was nice enough to let me sleep on his little boat. Day 25, I found my first puzzle thing. What the hell is all this? Okay, so somehow we need to open this door. We have a little puzzle. Okay, we're gonna go on ahead and turn on everything and see what happens. And to be honest, I'm just acting like I know how to use redstone, but I, I really don't know at oh all. This gosh, is all just it. guessing. And I got myself two spirit orbs. <gasps> that is so cool. I need to find more of these. As I journeyed on, I took out some chickens and then found this very cool location. Oh my god. What have I just found? Oh my gosh, there's a whole ass war. Nice, thank you for doing the dirty work for me. I found the waystone and named it Skeleton Village, of course, and continued on with my adventure, but eventually reached nighttime, so I went to sleep to play it safe. Is that an anteater? No way. You guys are so cool in real life, and of course in this game. Okay. Black bears we don't mess with. Not not in that way, just just because it's a bear, <laughs> obviously. <gasps> Hummingbirds, oh my god. Sorry, that's like my favorite bird, IRL. Yeah, so after admiring nature for quite a bit, I got myself some bamboo, found this unique tower, which had some loot inside of it, which of course I took. And I don't know how I didn't lose reputation, I guess since the villager wasn't looking directly at me, but I was able to rob him right behind his back, so I guess that's why it worked. As I journeyed on, I ran into a Garch camp, 
got some loot, and then found this dungeon where I went to sleep. And on day 27, I went down to make sure it was dungeon. But today wouldn't be the day that I explored it, so I added it to the Atlas. And not far from that dungeon entrance, there was a village. So I tamed another horse since I didn't claim the other one to be like my designated one. This was now our main horse. We can call it over to us whenever we want to. Let's learn a common seal. Energizing guard for 15 emeralds. Say less. Here you go. I mean, guess I can't use it. Yep. I don't want to say I got scammed, but like, yeah, I got scammed because I can't learn these skills. I don't know how the hell you learn guard. I never did, spoiler alert. So all these books I was getting from the guards, I could never put them to use. Eventually, I found the waystone and named it Very Far Village. And at last came up to the Corrupted Ogre's Lair. Oh, it's just Shrek. Shrek on heroin. Sad to see where he's come since the Shrek movies. Oh my god. What the hell was that? He used the eye. Not cool, man. Sheep, you're so dumb. I'm sorry. One more shot. Nice. Alright, let's go to bed. After going to sleep after taking out Shrek on heroin on day 28, I got my rewards. Alright, we got one of the eyes at last. And an essence. Alright, so since we can respawn it, I think this is a good spot to add a waystone. So I added a waystone that would become useful later in the 100 days. I then TP'd to the very far village and talked to one of the guild masters there to claim my reward. Well done, perhaps you'll be able to face Night Robber now. He is much weaker than who he once was, but I'd assume that he's still very dangerous, as he is still able to contain the power of the eye he's holding. Here's the map to his current whereabouts. Oh wow, okay, unlock some stuff. I traveled back home, got my reward for getting the lost eye, which was an emerald. All right, we got a lot of sorting to do. And by sorting, I meant breeding the animals, collecting the crops, and doing what you gotta do with the farm animals. No, oh, don't hit the child. Oh, you think you can escape the slaughter? Man, if I was the only person left on Earth and I had to kill animals to live, I don't think I'd be able to do it. Call me Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln fans will understand the reference. I don't know why I talked in that voice to do that. But anyways, I put the food in the furnace, made some more arrows, and called it a night. Day 29, I started by collecting some crops, breeding the animals once more. I need wood. That's what I'm lacking right now. Huh, I wonder what type of wood I'm talking about. Anyways, I started talking to this fisherman, and I instantly got some knowledge. I guess this is because my rep is up with some of the villagers, but hey, I'm not complaining. I didn't do anything. After I collected some wood and traveled to the very far village, and I found a building I had not yet explored, and within it, it had some precious ore to collect. Afterwards, I went to sleep, and on day 30, I started to journey a bit back to the dungeon I found earlier, and started making my campaign within it. What the heck is that, man? Oh, that guy's got some wolverine claws. Yeah, doing this stuff was pretty scary, because I didn't really know how powerful everything was within this dungeon, so sometimes I resorted to just swiping at their toes but hey some of the loot we would be getting would be totally worth it but yeah it's kind of hard to go through everything that i got from the chest but just know i got a lot here's like small montage of it i guess i also got this brewing stand that was on the side in one of the rooms this is as good as a diamond one we'll save the diamond one then and then i gave myself glowing because i for some reason thought luma would give me like absorption but hey you can say my skin is glowing now Ooh, this is better than my helmet eventually i made it down to the next level where i met the mob that i probably hate most in this mod pack that guy looks like a psycho oh my gosh the way these guys just swipe away like it's 10 year old me playing fruit ninja on my ipad is just insane and not only that there's some bomber class ones that are just as annoying but thankfully i made this valiant run right by them to take out two spawners for the win oh god However, I would soon learn my lesson as to how much damage these freaks can do. Jesus Christ. Alright, we don't mess around with those guys. That's so stupid. It actually pisses me off how much damage that little twat does. Better be some good stuff in here. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Sorry, that just kind of reminded me of that meme. Shout out, Moist Critical. So I kept on taking out mobs and exploring more of the dungeon and getting more and more loot. And eventually, while I was down there, I checked what day it was and it was day 31, which I started by drinking some nectar, which gave me absorption nine, which is pretty crazy. 
Level 30, baby. Dude, melding. You can't be playing with me like that. I feel like melding is just put in here to play with everyone's hearts because to be honest, who actually cares about having your tools invisible while using an invisibility potion? Like who even uses that? Oh, I just got another dislike on the video. My bad. Oh, there's another dislike on the video. Oh, another unsubscribe. Damn, I didn't think the invisibility community was that big. Eventually, I ran into a new mob I had not yet faced, which was this crystalline. Anyways, this was its baby form, so it was quite easy to take out. That totally does not sound right, but oh well. No. Okay, I don't think the loot is worth it to just go through them. Let's just go down to the next level. So I let that loot go. Who knows? Maybe there was a diamond sword in there with sharpness five. I'll never know. I made it to the next level where I was scared by this camouflage creeper. Ooh! I kept on progressing and eventually found some diamonds and golden apples in a chest. Not bad at all, if I can say so myself. And then I found this super freak creature, skeleton. I don't know the name to it because the name never showed. And all I know is that thing can probably one shot me. I found myself some diamond horse armor and started to use my crossbow to shoot at this mysterious skeleton armored knight. And you see my arrow count there? Yep, that's at 99. And on day 32, now I'm at 50 arrows. Oh, and now we progress more, and I'm now in the 30s range. Yep, I wasted so many. Oh, now it's 20. Oh my gosh. I actually wasted this many arrows, and to be honest, I don't even know if I put a dent in this guy's health. And eventually, I just have to give up and move on after wasting basically 90 arrows. But anyways, eventually, I found this Iron Sword of the Storm, which is pretty dang cool. Ugh. I don't know why I sound like an old man whenever I get scared. Oh, I'm old, man. Shortly after, I found this devilish white shield of the defender, which inflicts bleeding, and it also gives me plus 2.5 armor. Aw, man. Shout out to Captain Sparkles, the legend. Anyways, after that wholesome moment, I ran into this crazy mother... Yeah, that guy sucked. Claudius, the blood glare. Man gave withering and took out half your health with each hit. I've got you in my sights. But with my little barrier, I was able to take him out. Now what does a guy like this drop? Oh, saddle. After looting a chest, eventually I reached day 33 where I ran into Goblino. Hey, Goblino, why'd you punch me? And at last, I was starting to get the loot that was really worth it within the dungeon. Infinity. Flame. Wow. That was finally on the last level where it was nether themed, where I started getting some very powerful books, regen potions, and armor that had really good enchants on it. Unfortunately, on breaking four, I was on these golden leggings, so major L. While I was down down there I crafted myself some more golden apples and played it safe by taking out some of the mobs by using this little tactic I made up. I'm in boots baby. Yes. Violent iron sword. Please be something good. A mending diamond shovel. We take that all day. And a god apple. Pretty dang good. Anyways I crafted some golden apples after. Got some slime. Shout out young thug. And looted more and more and another pair of diamond boots okay i don't want to sound ungrateful but give me some of the other pieces oh my god how many of these am i gonna get eventually i was pretty satisfied with what i had in hand so i added a waystone and returned back to my home village where it was day 34. this day is gonna be a lot shorter because i'm not sure when it turned day 34 exactly since i was down within the caves but basically i just used the rest of the day to offload everything i just got day 35 i started by doing the routine farm type tings got myself some more gravel crafted more arrows and then gave another villager a job come on man make me president i'm handing jobs out here like um who's someone that's not controversial well everyone's controversial to someone's eyes uh like elon musk in austin with giga factory i don't know man but hey etsuko would give me a quest to take out two silver beasts. I then gave one of the villagers another job, unfortunately, no quest was given. And then I talked to one of the fishermen again, and then my knowledge went up automatically. Honestly, let's look for silver beasts. What the hell is that? My sleep paralysis demon, hello. Iron golems. Okay, we got two, we got two, we got backup. I don't know why it's so satisfying hearing the iron golems nice. beat down my sleep paralysis demon, but shortly after, I would run into an even bigger, badder mob. Puss in Boots antagonist. That sounded like a beast, whatever that was. Iron Golem. No, I'm gonna steal my kill, man. Okay, it wasn't a silver beast, good to know. Unfortunately, there was no silver beast that night. Oh, look at my horse. 
Hey, it does work. As I journeyed with my horse, I ran into some witch doctors. So here's how this little skirmish went. Sit down, boy. Pretty easy, and I got myself an essence, and I continued my journey, saw a hot air balloon in the distance, and eventually landed in another village, just as nighttime approached. So I slept in one of the houses there, and on day 37, I continued my journey to the haunted ruin. What a village or a castle? Who is this? Dark King. Oh, woe to me. I used to rule the world, alas. Now I have nothing to my name. My kingdom has fallen. My family is no more. You're an adventurer. Yes, you may be able to help me. There's only one thing that can restore my kingdom to this one of glory a staff of rebirth okay wow that is quite a tough one this is the i used to rule the world type of guy yeah quite a unique interaction but anyways i continued journeying on for the whole rest of the day still no luck so i went to sleep in the open forest land and on day 38 i found myself a wild waystone which i collected so because i was traveling for so damn long without any luck of getting closer to the haunted rune i decided to switch my task to find knight rober okay i know I've been saying robber the whole time and you're gonna hear that for the rest of the video probably but I just realized now as I'm doing this voiceover that it's spelled rober so you English freaks in the comments you're welcome I'm saying it right now anyways I journeyed on and found a whole village of boats and then found this fisherman's lodge that also had a lot of unique loot within it bucket of platypus need I say more oh my gosh look at these bucket of axolotl very cool build and I of course continued with my adventure eventually went to sleep and on day 39, I ran into this villager blacksmith's home where I got some loot. However, I did get caught opening an empty chest out of all the damn things. It was empty. There wasn't even any loot inside of it. But thankfully, it didn't fully impact my reputation with the villagers. It was just like a minor decrease. So nothing to worry about. But anyways, I of course continued pillaging this guy's home and continued to make my way towards Night Rober. Before leaving the village, I gathered some wheat and then continued my journey until I went to sleep on the ice plains. Day 40, I continued my journey towards Night Rover and here were some thoughts that I had. Dude, am I just in a nuclear winter? Am I in the universe where the Rubik's Cube destroyed the mantle? Some of y'all may get that meme reference. As I was journeying, I then saw a griffin. Note to you guys, these guys are hostile. No, I pose no threat. You're telling me I find stuff like this, but I can't find Night Robber. Brilliant, isn't it? God. Oh my god, I just escaped death. Okay, if I have to cross a whole ocean, I kind of take that as a good sign. I found myself another broken nether portal and had a lot of unique loot inside of it. And of course, I did get the golden block. I then found this spawner that was on the surface and inside of the chest had enderman spawn eggs, which is loot I had never seen before. And then I realized I got a trophy in my inventory and I'm assuming it's because of the challenge I just completed. All right, that whale is scaring me. Trust me, I'm not the harpoon hunters that poach you. Isn't that sad that people do that though? As soon as I ran into the next island, I decided to go to sleep, and on day 41, I was attacked by a moth. Oh! A moth? Idiot. Moth scales, I'm good, bro. Bro, with how long this is taking, this guy better give me the holy grail. I said my hopes got up when I had to cross an ocean. Things like my fourth one. Found ourselves over the water village. Aren't these normally abandoned, though? I could be wrong, but you know what that means. Very, very good loot. Plus seven armor, hold on. And it has an empty socket, that's actually not bad. After looting for a bit and taking out some mobs, I decided to go into one of the houses and go to sleep. And on day 42, all that time traveling was finally rewarded with an abundant supply supply of diamonds and that is honestly an understatement wait i have fortune too right oh no wait is it on a different one no i should have been using this one i found three to four of these little sections in the village so basically my diamond supply was taken care of for the rest of this 100 days all right i think we gotta continue our adventure though if i ever needed more diamonds well i now had a waystone for it as i call this village the diamond village oh i'm getting closer knight's robber the cordial one. Oh. It was okay, it was cut off. Primordial one. Yeah, but it definitely looks like a night robber structure if I ever saw one. I'm guessing he's in here. There's the arena, and it is filled with trees. There he is. I would go to sleep so I would have a full day to fight Night Rober. And on day 43, the action began. I gotta jump in like Oh, he already sees me. <gasps> There will be no cheesing today, this man just said. Look at that speed, oh my gosh. Look at that fire damage. 
take one to be safe. We have many to spare. No need to risk anything. Guys got the moves like me. Gotta give him that. Where do you go? Hello? Alright, he can dash back up here. Ouch. Go near here. Whoo! A rogue guy, baby. Well, we're obviously gonna add a waystone here because I ain't making this trip ever again. At last, that long journey would come to an end, and I would return to the home village where I talked to the guildmaster who gave me my next quest. Wow, you defeated the night robber, huh? Was he tough? Back in the day, he was one of the scariest opponents you could face in a duel. Guess his age caught up to him finally. Well, the next eye holder is another human. He's currently living peacefully in his farmhouse. Here's the map to his location. Where's the X? I unlocked a ton of things for completing that quest. After claiming my emerald from the quest log, I would go to sleep in my home. Day 44. I put the trophy on display I got the other day for opening that one chest. I then crafted myself a diamond. I don't know if it's pronounced Tachi or Taki, but since y'all are apparently English majors, y'all can tell me. Like a badass walking with this. Anyways, afterwards, I did the routine farm animal breeding and then called my horse over to give it its diamond horse armor. For the rest of the day, I did some inventory dumping and then went to sleep. Day 45, I began my journey to find the toolsmith's axe, which is one of the quests I got earlier. And as I began my journey, I ran into one of the biggest generated structures I have ever seen. I of course avoided it because I thought there was be some massive boss there, and I added it to my atlas to return to one day. I'd cross another ocean to try and find the toolsmith's axe, and on my way, I ran into a village. Unfortunately, it like, crashed my game. As you can see, everyone was like frozen, so I had to leave. When I returned to the game, it brought me a bit before I arrived to the village, and I ran into some church doctors, so kind of was thankful for that since I took him out with ease. Love the speed. Oh, you hear that noise? That whoosh. It's actually in it. Okay, dude. Then, man, this thing was so cool to use. And I got some essence from these church doctors, so this little skirmish was a W. Day 46. I continued my journey and found myself another waystone and arrived to the village that crashed my game. Thankfully, that didn't happen this time, and I was able to explore this very cool library. Look at this library, dude. I then found one of the buildings that is supposed to be a fancy restaurant, I believe, and discovered a room that I didn't check out last time, so inside of it, I got myself an emerald and a diamond. I was about to explore that, but then saw the stupid anglers under. Like, bro, don't these things only exist in, the, like, the marina trench or whatever? And as I kept on traveling with my horse, I then ran into a different type of ogre. Wait, this is a different one. Who the hell is this? <gasps> All right, man. And I apologize for the major temperature change. I didn't realize it, but I put like a blue light filter whenever I'm playing in the nighttime. And I don't know why I thought it wouldn't appear in the recording. You're gonna see it a lot more since a lot of this recording was done late at night. But anyways, I continued to bow Shrek 2.0 from a distance. Unfortunately, I ran out of arrows mid battle. So I decided to waste stone back home, buy some arrows from my trusty Fletcher, then return back to where I was and went to sleep. And and on day 47, I finally took out Shrek 2.0. Finally? Man gave out a moan before he died. <laughs> what he dropped? A giant eye fragment? All right, back, back on course. Continued on with my journey, and I ran into a pillager mansion. That's what I call it. It's not a woodland mansion. It's just a structure with a bunch of them in a big house. And then I witnessed some underwater battles. Oh my god, no! We gotta save Shamu. We'll drive them away from you, Shamu. For all the times we got to see you in person at SeaWorld. And after a bit more of traveling, I finally arrived to my destination. Ooh, they do have those cucks. Honestly, gonna go on a sniper campaign. Damn, how many arrows? Just take out the, the big ones. The younglings will come later. Damn, these guys are tanky. Alright, pussies. Who wants it? Oh, these guys suck. 
Oh, why, why was I scared of these guys? Are you kidding me? It was pretty easy to take out that camp of orcs, and I got the tool smith's axe. I am tempted to go down that dungeon, though. Wait, let me check it out real quick. We can do the pillager thing, since that's newer, and then come back to this. Just go straight to the bottom floor as fast as possible, get the loot, and dip. I say that's the plan. That would be the upcoming plan. But before that happened, I found myself a village called Moishila. Returned home, went to sleep, and on day 48, I gave Felicia her axe. Yes, this is the axe I've made. I've never been able to top this, you know. Anyway, here's your reward. I appreciate your help. I got an emerald, and oh, I got an axe in return, and the toolsmith guild. I bought myself some more arrows, and then returned to the pillager mansion, where I began my campaign on the ones that were outside. Alright, we got some archers. Not bad. That makes our job easier. How do all of them know I'm here? Yeah, after spending quite most of the day only taking out like two to three of them, I was pretty worried. That's tough. I don't know if I can actually take this out. And on day 49, I continued my battle against them, and here's how things went. Bro, I feel like I'm a Spartan in 300 right now, man. Look at all these arrows. Get the damage. Nothing. Nah, man. Screw this. This is way too many. And with the amount of damage I'm doing, I'm literally shooting spitballs at them. I returned back to the dungeon, but before that, I got my revenge on more seagulls, and then went down into the dungeon. The loot was obviously just as similar as the previous one. However, this time I found a special room I had not found, which had some emeralds, lapis, an enchantment table, and a block of emerald under some carpets. And let me tell you, this battle with Corvin the Rotten would go down as one of the most dumbest battles I have ever done in my life. How, how does he give me wither through the walls? It makes zero sense. How? The hell, man? Oh, Gabuino from the shadows. I knew that I left that open like a dumbass, of course. Corvin the pussy needs to get his ass over here. No! I killed Gabuino! Oh no, he's still there. Just don't get in the way, man. Don't get in the way. You idiots. Oh my god. It turned to day 50 and I was still battling Corvin the Rotten. Oh, my helmet broke. I decided to return back home because I was kind of sick of the dungeon life. So I offloaded everything I just got, created more golden apples, and then realized I still haven't completed that Silver Beast quest. So I decided to stay up during the night and battle any mobs that came in my path. And towards dawn, I found myself a Silver Beast. Get it? Because it's like Dawncraft. A nice little like, play with words. Never mind. Anyways, you see this guy's moves. Okay, a bite, and a bite. Alright, nice. Oh my god! And on the morning of day 51, I took out my first silver beast. Yes, counts. I bought myself some more arrows and decided to begin my journey to find nine tails. I don't know why the map I was given didn't have a marker for where exactly he was at. I guess it was kind of playing hard to get. But anyways, I decided to TP to Majorier. I guess we'll just call her Horse Roach. A homage to the Witcher. As I was journeying, I found a lighthouse, and inside it had this map number 47. I'm guessing this is like a vanilla thing. Honestly, not too sure. Forgot my bed. To the village. I returned to a village I passed during my journey so that I could go to sleep. And on day 52, I did a little bit of looting around in the village, got myself a waystone, and then continued on where I was met with some quicksand snow. Uh oh. F***ing us over right now. Oh, this isn't how my horse goes. It's f***ing dead. I don't know why, magic kinda sad. That's why you don't give names to your animals in game. Pretty brutal day. I lost my horse, Roach. Frostmaw had to claim some territory in the ice point, so I had to travel the long way. We're actually gonna put some respect on his name and go around. But eventually, I stumbled upon another village where I got a waystone and then found a house to go to sleep in. Trust me, you're not gonna die. You're definitely my first horse. Day 53, I tamed oh another horse. Unfortunately, I didn't have a saddle on hand, and then I ran into some, I don't know if it's bison or buffalo, but I thought it was pretty cool. And also, I found where the Sentinel Knights is located, so I marked it on my atlas, but continued my journey. Dude, oh my god, look at that fat rat. Uh-uh, I ain't in New York. Oh, <gasps> yes, a puzzle maze! God, I love adventures that lead to these parts. Before entering the puzzle maze, I found myself a wild Shrek, which is quite a surprise, and I took him out without taking any damage from him. Essence? Something? 
Okay, essence, I guess I guess we'll take it. Ah, oh, that is that is dumb. It's trying to kill me. Oh my. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Yeah, I decided not to risk my life just for like two spirit orbs. But anyways, I took out those witch doctors that were sitting on that island and I went to sleep to where I killed them. And I'm too scared to find out like if I die, do I just go back to the start? To the start of the title screen, damn right. I don't know if that's like a poetic thing. But anyways, on day 54, I then stumbled upon a hunter illager house. So there were two of those guys in there, took them out with these. And within, I got a nice restock on food, especially apples. Power one. Nice, I'll use it till it breaks. Unfortunately, no luck in finding nine tails that day, and I would have to go to sleep in the open forest land. Seeing some structures I haven't seen. Freedom. There we go. Tanja. Oh, there's a spawner there. Come on, Tanja. Tanja's gonna die. Or not? Oh, shoot. Can't jump in. Damn it. So day 55 was spent dealing with these camp of vindicators and afterwards I did a little looting and found a little book of lore. Evoker's Orders. Journal Day 153. The Evoker sent us on a scouting mission to find the Labyrinth of Mysteries. They think some secret treasure is hidden there. I think they have no idea what they're talking about. We could really use some new leadership among the Illagers. So bad for this Illager, he has like nowhere to go. How, how, do I let this guy go? How does this work? Oh my gosh. What an anaconda. I arrived to what I believe was Nine Tails home, so I marked it on the map and then decided to go home where I totally forgot I got bad omen, so a raid started. Aw, oh, shit. Okay, I returned, updated my game. Unfortunately, the raid is still going on. Hell is breaking loose. It says it's a default raid now. I think it's a good thing. I was able to find one of the raiders and took him out and then went to sleep. And on day 56, the battle continued. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to mess with the Iron Golem. Oh my god. Like one shot. Oh, okay, guard. Man's moving. And at last, I finally found out about the weapon's special skill. If you already commented it, yes, I found out about it, and I now know how to use it. Anyways, the guards and Iron Golems did most of the work with this portion of the raid, so I was able to scoop up all the loot. Unfortunately, there was one raider that just couldn't be found. You find them, Iron Golems, you know what to do. So I gave up on the hunt for that one remaining raider, and I crafted myself a lunch bag, and then transformed it into a lunch box. So what this thing does is that it randomizes the food that you eat to maintain your food diversity and it also saves a lot of storage in your inventory so huge W. I then crafted myself some more golden apples and a quiver to store my arrows in. I then gave myself a little armor upgrade and then witness Puss in Boots antagonists get absolutely obliterated. The hell was that? Oh my god. Well it looks like they got him. I mean, he's getting jumped. Literally the whole town. Oh my god, it looks so cool with this appreciation post. Come on. Anyways, that appreciation post never happened, and I continued my search for one more silver beast. Unfortunately, no silver beast was found that night, and on day 57, I decided to repair my bow. I then stocked up on some more arrows, crafted a shield. So let's try and find the raider, and he was never found. Day 58 would be the day I would go to Ninetales home. So I traveled back to the location and here's how things went. Oh, it's just some emo boy. You're joking, right? Hand to hand combat. Oh God. How can I shoot him? Oh, there we go. <gasps> ow, 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 ow. There we go. Oh my God, I dodged that. What the hell is that? It's actually a nine tails. Okay. Oh my god, projectiles. <sighs> nice. Nice. No! That was my power move, man. What the hell, man? Nice. This turns into like Dr. Octopus. C. <sighs> yo! 
Yes! Sit down. The exotic eye. Dude, we, we were kind of doming that whole fight. I became victorious at the end and took out Nine Tails, aka Emo Boy. And so I TP'd back home and talked to the Guildmaster for my next quest. At this point, I'm not even surprised. Good job. The Nine Tails was a notoriously violent spirit. I have no idea why I decided to retire at an abandoned barn. Anyhow, here's the whereabouts of the next eye holder. Beware, there is nothing like the ones you faced before. The Skeleton Lord. I unlocked the enchantment table and the smithing table, so huge. W and then made a major mistake at the moment by wiping my whole population of chickens. Oh. Oh. Time to restart a farm. I got myself my emerald reward, found myself a smithing table in the village, which I took back to my place, and then played around with some of the gems I had. During the nighttime, I found myself the last silver beast I needed to take out, so here's all things went. Oh, what, what is that? What is that? Ew, like extended its head. Remind me of a creature from King Kong. If you know, you know. Maybe too old of a reference. No, I got it. Yes, you did well. I can feel the evil forces stopping their advances briefly, but their conquest is never ending. Talk to me again if you wish for another contract. Say less, man. Hello again. My next contract for you is to exterminate orcs that roam around our land. These humanoid monsters have set up camps everywhere. I'm sure you've seen a few. Retrieve at least six orcs' teeth and bring them to me as proof. I journeyed to an orc camp I remember finding nearby the Goblin King's location, but unfortunately, there was only one orc there. But he didn't drop any teeth, so I of course lose the orc camp. All right, well, at least the raid is gone. Nice. There you go, my guy. I then started my travel towards the Skeleton Lord, and I started by teleporting to Majorier, which it brought me closer to its location. All right, let's hope we don't have our... Actually, I've never had a horse die before. Don't worry about it, Roach. Not even gonna call you 2.0, because there definitely wasn't one before you. What is a zebra? Never mind. After traveling all day, I did not find the Skeleton Lord, so I went to sleep, and on day 60, I continued my journey, where I found this very unique village. A quiet place? So, like, everyone dead here, or what? Oh, wow. Okay, definitely can't rob. Anyone want to talk to me? Or are we all introverts? I found myself another waystone on my way to the Skeleton Lord's location, and I finally found it. Before heading up, I got attacked by off-brand Wolverine. Why, man? That's better. Oh, well, I of course also started collecting blocks because I definitely did not have enough to head up. I took out the hunter illagers with ease. I then looted their place and decided to go to sleep. On day 61, I started to climb up to the skeleton overlord's island. Here's how things went. And ho. Oh, all right, we can bow him. Pretty easy fight. Honestly, it may be easier in there. Alright, this is not an easy fight anymore. <sighs> okay, 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 I get it. We can do damage. Easy does it, baby. A pretty easy fight, and as my reward, I got the magical eye, baby. Now, shall we journey home? I think so. I went back home and went straight to the Guildmaster for the next quest. The Skeleton Lord is probably the most powerful undead I've ever seen. I'm surprised you're able to take him down. All right, let's see. The next eye is guarded by a renowned Holy Knight. I'm not sure if it's possible for even you. Anyhow, I'll give you its location. Proceed with caution. For now, maybe I'll put this on, just so we're faster. Fingers crossed we run into an orc camp on the way there. Day 62, I started my journey towards the Sentinel Knight, and on my way there, I found this, like, witch-like biome. So here's what I found in this biome. So it's a good guy or bad guy? Question answered. Sinking feeling, yeah, no kidding. Scroll of Life. Bottle o' Lightning. Oh man, you already know this thing does some crazy thing. Okay, what the heck. As I continued on, I once again saw a legion of Shamu fighting some Angor, so I tried to help, but we did witness this crazy launch into the air, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then I went to sleep, and on day 63, I finished the Angor fish that were on the surface. That was a sick shot. Cinematic, some would say. This kind of reminds me of a Mindplex game. Ah, oh, too soon, too soon, since it's dead. And at last, after some journeying, I arrived to the Sentinel Knight's location. All right, well, let's see what this guy does. I'm already feeling the beta male energy. Oh, there you are. What the f was that, man? 
this guy's OP. I mean, it's his fault. I'm not even exploiting. He's the one who tried to attack me, and he reached the level number 10 of f***ing around and finding out. Little did I know is that the Sentinel Knight hit me with that Uno Reverse card, and I'm the one who f***ed around and found out, so I quickly realized I was nowhere ready for this battle. I'm already feeling the beta male energy, so after strategically running away from that battle, I left by adding a waystone to the Sentinel Knight and returned back home to go through my enchantment arc phase, which I started by breeding the animals and buying a lot of emeralds from my Fletcher using sticks, and then went to sleep. Day 64, I claimed my reward for getting the magical eye, and looked into how to make honey glazed ham, which starts by getting a piece of ham from a pig. Something lighter than a sword, a knife? I actually figured this out with my brain just by reading the description, so I crafted myself an iron knife, got myself more emeralds, which upgraded my Fletcher, and then I went out hunting for a pig and got myself a piece of ham. Yeah, we just need one. Okay, now we need rice. Little did I know this would lead into one of the longest journeys to complete a quest, but anyways, more on that later. My fishing rod is broken. Alright, create a fishing rod. Crafted a fishing rod for that fisher, but couldn't find him in time, so decided to go to sleep. And on day 65, I ran into a wandering trader, and at last I got a somewhat near god enchant diamond helmet, so I gave in to his request and gave him exactly what he wanted. I'm just gonna wear this for now though, so we have extra speed. I then gave the fishing rod to Marnie. However, I was pretty confused when I talked to him again, and he asked if I wanted to learn how to fish, which I already knew how to. I then finally upgraded my backpack into an iron backpack so I had a lot more storage I went back to my Fletcher and bought even more emeralds and then I checked my quest rewards and found out that I got myself an iron pike for just crafting a backpack and some XP for the iron backpack let's go find rice unless somehow there's chest here with rice I doubt it the journey for rice would begin and I traveled all day until I went to sleep by this little villager community which had some sponge in its storage which I took I got some quests from these guys but Obviously, I would never complete these. Oh, we can go, um, we can TP to the night rover time to go back home and on my way back i found this shipwreck and of course got a buried treasure map and spent all day looking for the chest which i didn't find so i went to sleep and on day 67 i dug even more and at last i finally found it yes oh my god finally this probably took me a total of 10 minutes of just digging to find it mom please tell me there's a waystone just make my life easier all right well there's no waystone here unfortunately so it's not much i can do except continue home i then found myself a village which did have a waystone which I used to go to Night Rover's location and after walking for a bit I went to sleep and on the morning of day 68 I took out some church doctors and found this pretty cool toucan. Hey it's a toucan. I love those birds. An anteater. Bro why do you need rice for honey glazed ham? It ain't that deep. After traveling for quite a bit I finally found some wild rice. Rice! Beautiful. Honestly, let's adventure back. How about that for a change? On my way back, I ran into some barbarians that were automatically hostile. So, you know, I did what I had to do and then ran into some rats. There's actually a lot of them. Oh, what happened to my shift attack? I died of some rats, I'm actually gonna cry. And after it took me a while to take him out, I got myself an essence as a reward and decided to go to sleep in what was the barbarian's camp. Day 69. More rats, good. So yeah, I was actually happy to see rats now since they do drop essence. While I was in this village, there was this little mine area which had this pretty cool bow. And after a bit, I then found this boss witch which I took out with these. Unfortunately, didn't get anything of use except for this Elton iron forged leather salads of stubbornness i don't even know why i read that all out but anyways i never used it i then ran into some witch doctors which they almost took me down but hey golden apples for the win unfortunately didn't get an essence from them and then i spotted a rabbit because i thought i needed some more rabbit hide to create a slingshot which if you don't remember was one of the quests for my trusty fletcher back at home god we're just we're doing a lot of useful things now only took me 69 days on my way back i found myself some more wild rabbits Rice, which I collected and then went to sleep. Whoa! Oh god, those are Komodos. After running away from those Komodos, I ran into another wild truck, which I took out with ease. It's all about timing. 
Like, I just dommed that whole battle. Another essence. I found myself another broken nether portal and got its goods. One of those things was some horse armor called Barding. I'm not sure what exactly that is, but anyways, I gave it to my horse, Roach. And I traveled all day into the nighttime, where I found what looked like an abandoned tower. However, when I opened the hatch, there was a Vindicator waiting upstairs. So I brought him down and took him out, along with the skeleton demon. The demons have been summoned. That's a shame. Alright, what's in here? I've never seen this structure. And inside, man, was I rewarded. Sucks. The hell? A stalker? That's just weird. I didn't know I was a Twitch streamer. In this village, I got myself one of the goddess statues to go, and then found this OP witch who constantly healed itself, and I eventually had enough, so I decided to use the waystone from this village to go back to my home. I'm about to die. Well, thankfully, I didn't die and survived the poison, and that was a close call. When I got to my house, I combined two bows that I had to get power two and get that 6% total speed, and on the morning of day 71, I crafted the slingshot, which I gave to my Fletcher. Boom. Yes, this is exactly what I imagined to be. Hmm, doesn't seem that impressive. Seems like it uses stones as ammo. Well, here you go. I don't really need it. Thanks for showing it to me. Have I completed all the quests for this guy? I guess I have. I'm on string? Bang. I got you. What's next? Oh, actual feathers. Yes. The Fletcher is a good guy to upgrade, as you can see. Spent a lot of the day chopping some more trees down in the area. Got myself one of the goddess statues, and then made a smoker to smoke the ham. And as I was looking into how to make honey glazed ham again, I realized I needed to make cooked rice, so this led to another long process. For continuing that though, I upgraded my Fletcher once more, and now he was a master, so shout out to Tenail or Tenil, however the hell you say it. A fully upgraded lad. Not bad. There was some clay in the nearby river right by the village, so I was able to craft the cooking pot. <laughs> Goodness sir, needs heat from below. And then realized I needed to put it under a source of fire, so I collected some more logs, created the campfire. All right, let me cook. And bang, I now had a functional cooking pot. I cooked up the rice, and at last I was able to make some honey glazed ham. Can I finally make the honey glazed ham? Alright, where is thou? And on the morning of day 72, I cashed in my reward. However, little did I know that this mother f was greedy. You want two? Are you freaking greedy? Like it says honey glazed ham, not honey glazed hams. Like are you kidding me? Where's the plural? Plural. However the hell you say, I don't care. Why why didn't it tell me earlier? Anyways, I got myself another goddess statue and found the pen where some pigs were being held, so I got myself another piece of ham. When I returned back to my house, I fed one of the statues some essence and upgraded myself to get one extra heart. Honey Please, Tam, once and for all. I don't think I've ever been more fatigued completing a stupid challenge like that. Here, that is amazing. You do have a town for cooking. Please accept this as gratitude. A leather work. So what can you give me? Uh, I can get dog shit. Nice. I did all that for a leather man. Yep, quite a waste in my opinion. I don't know why I thought this whole time Carmelo was a farmer. Obviously he doesn't have the straw hats and I got a pretty useless guild, but anyways, I went to sleep. Just need to find some orcs, please. Day 73, I went journeying out to find myself some more orcs, and thankfully I did find a camp. Unfortunately, I did not get enough orc teeth by the end of it, so this would not be the end of this quest. After journeying for some more, I went to sleep. I just need orc teeth, aka British people teeth, please. And I decided I thought it would be good to go down a dungeon, which is exactly what I did. However, before going through all of it, I gotta give a shout out to Chosen Architect. I watch some of his videos regarding Dawncraft and without him and I wouldn't have found out a lot about the features of this mod pack so shout out to Chosen Architect you guys should subscribe to him so I TP'd back home and made myself a novice spell book look at that novice spell book baby wow I really should have looked into this a long time ago I am so dumb. God, I knew that wood was useful in some way. Okay, I just need to find a very flashy tree. Sorry, Mr. Beast and Team Trees, but it's gotta go. And on the morning of day 75, I went in search of the arch wood tree. And thankfully, there was one in the nearby forest. And with the wood, I crafted myself an imbuement chamber and a scribe's table, which is where you can unlock the secrets of the magic spell book. Okay, yeah, we want this one. So we need a lantern and a torch. So I got myself a lantern, and of course I had a torch, and I unlocked the Glyph of Conjure Mage Light. Brother, what is happening? Which would save me 
on torches. Basically, I didn't need them anymore. Aha! Oh my god, we did it. Only took me 75 days. We got rock copper. I'm guessing copper comes into use. Some levels. An apple. So I returned back to the chosen dungeon and started to make my way through it by using the mage light. Let there be light. Like, come on now. You madman. What are you doing down here? I ran into Goblino well down there. And I just realized Goblino actually has a name. This one's called Lona. So I traded some apples and got some emeralds. And then in one of the chests, I found a trident. Oh my gosh. I didn't think that was loot in here. And I, of course, kept on finding more and more loot. Oh, that's Brog. Oof, and that is why we stood behind there. Something broke. Oh yeah, my feet broke. While I was down there, it turned into day 76 where I found myself a lead, some very special arrows, and some more potions of regen. Also, a very powerful shield. Some nice boots. I'd rather have these on. And on day 77, I reached the bottom floor where I ran into this elite wither skeleton who I took out from a distance. Also, let me know, does regen negate the effect of poison because I'm like standing in the poison an aurora while i have regen and i wasn't affected by it but anyways then i had a lot of silver fish to deal with oh my god That was one of the most satisfying things ever. Probably the best find in this dungeon run was this diamond chest plate. Sharpness three, no chest here I believe, because it's supposed to be in the middle and it's degenerated. And after a very successful looting session within this dungeon, I TP'd back home, where for most of the nights I used to sort everything I just got. Yes. Yes, sounding like a villager getting turned on by emeralds. But anyways, did some more chicken sling. Give me the feathers. I'll be well on my way. The cycle of life. At last, I looked into how to make a warp stone, which would save me so many XP levels. So I was now on the hunt for some purple dye. But before doing that, I decided to make an explorer's compass. Yes, I added this mod in, and unfortunately, it cannot pin down any orc camp, so kind of an L. During the nighttime, I decided I was going to go the mixing route and first got some blue dye. But I'm going to do mob hunting tonight. Maybe we can get like some very cool drops or something. So during the nighttime, I saw this charged up creeper. Upon killing it, it gave me this Ender Surge gem with 100% purity. And then, out of the blue, the undead army approached. Okay, I hear music. What the hell? Oh my god, that's actually a lot. I just see Puss in Boots, boss. Oh my god. Ah, that thing's tanky. Alright, where's the undead? I fought the undead army all night long, and on day 79, the battle still continued. Alright, we got a chunky skeleton. God, I'm so cool. Oh, not really. Yeah, I'm so cool. Victory! I was successful in taking out the undead army, and in the loot bag, I'm honestly not really sure what I got. I I'm assuming it was the emeralds, but anyways, I continued my search for some red dye. So I got some rose bushes in the village, transformed it into red dye, and then made some purple dye. And at last, I had the warp stone in my hand. There she is. Forgot what I was trying to do during the nighttime, but unfortunately, some phantoms swooped by, and in the process, I inflicted some friendly fire. Have I not gone to sleep in a while? No guard! Is he mad at me? Let's sleep on it. 
deity. Thankfully, the guard wasn't mad at me anymore, and I started by collecting some wood, created some bookshelves, and then when I went wandering out a bit further from the village, I found this spawner, which had some loot right under it, and I also collected some source berries. I maximized my enchantment table and can now get level 30 enchants. The first thing I wanted to get were some pretty good enchanted diamond leggings, but we all know the process of not always getting what you want, so I had to constantly recycle it, and by the time I got to level 30, the enchants for the diamond leggings were an L. So to get my levels back up, I bred the animals once more, and finally got protection 3 on my diamond leggings. So to get back to level 30, I traded with my Fletcher, and while I was totally fine taking out the zombie, an iron golem had to get in the way. Don't hit me! Oh my god. Is he mad at me? Are oh, you idiot. You actual idiot. Alright, well, let's just fight mobs. So I journeyed away from the village so the Iron Golem wouldn't be mad anymore, and I took out mobs until I reached level 30, then returned back to the enchantment table, and got protection 3 and projectile protection 4 on my diamond leggings. Day 81, I claimed a reward from the quest log, and then looked into how to add a feeding upgrade to my backpack so that I would be automatically fed. So that's exactly what I did, and I made the upgraded version of it and added it to my backpack. Okay, I'm gonna fight mobs this night. Get some more levels. During the nighttime, I also chopped out another different archwood tree. Unfortunately, the crowd turnout was just as good as Smoke Perp's concerts now, and no one really showed up this night, so I was stuck at level 25. Bro, the sun's already coming up, and I have barely found any mobs. That sucked. All right, let's find an ore camp, and hopefully we can get some cool potions. Day 82, on the way out, I found another archwood tree, and literally traveled all day long, but didn't find anything, so then I went to sleep on the open for land and on day 83 i continued my journey where i found this broken nether portal but this time the chest was protected by grog the bull oh my god i almost just myself there. Finally took him out and unfortunately the chest wasn't that rewarding besides the golden block on the side but I was soon rewarded by finding a new structure. Wow. I slowly opened up the gates and made my way through the entrance. There were many spawners hidden under the carpet on the first floor, so I did the best possible job in removing them, and then made my way to the second level where I entered this armory room, which I thought was pretty cool. This is very shiny. I went through the same process of removing spawners on the second level, and started looking through some of the barrels where it had pretty good loot, and then as I went up third level, a ravager was waiting for me. I knew it. Thankfully, I was able to get to a safe spot and take that ravager out from a distance. The loot here was pretty unique. Unique, such as these nuggets of experience, golden apples, and some candles that could add some arcana to our enchantment table, so I did take them. When I returned back to the third level, I was already met with some Vex who were so annoying, and unfortunately there was also an elite skeleton demon, and thankfully I took it out and got looting three as my reward. Also, if it wasn't for that chandelier, I think I would have died of fall damage. Actually, nah, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Oh, where is this? Oh my god. Oh, I have a totem of undying. And with the totem of undying now in my hand, let's just say I got a little cocky and the life was spent. But thankfully, it wasn't mine, but the totems. Get me out, get me out! There goes my first totem on dying. The boots are broken. All right, let's go to the armory. On day 84, I got some boots from the armory and just kept on getting harassed by these Vex, man. They just don't stop. So eventually, I had enough and dealt with the last few that were coming after my ass, and I added a waystone to go back home. But this time, I used my warp stone to go home. Told you, I was saving levels now. God, what a nightmare. I have an idea for the Sentinel Knight. Oh, this may be genius maybe my demise full foreshadowing anyways i claimed my nugget of experience went back to the enchantment table and added some candles around that is cool i didn't know you could do that it's not feeding it it's not cool anymore i went back to the fletcher to buy some more arrows got some more wood and then did a little bit of offloading need some bloody pumpkins that's kind of giving away what i have planned so i journeyed back to crummerd where i got some pumpkins then i created some iron blocks and i think you guys already know what i have planned to take out the Sentinel Knight. 
Oh, I like that noise. And once more, I went through some enchantment table struggles. God dang it. But after taking a risk, I was rewarded. Knockback too. Okay, I'm tempted, honestly. Okay, let's see what we get. Yes, it was worth it. So with my somewhat powerful sword, I did some book combining and made my sword a lot more better. Oh, it's beautiful, all right. Before heading out, I repaired my armor. It ain't much, but it's it's honest work. Let's end this. And then at last, I returned back to where the Sentinel Knight was waiting for me. Day 85. I would initiate the battle with the Sentinel Knights, but this time, I brought back up. Boom, 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 bop. I already messed up. Don't attack me, don't attack me. <sighs> Ooh! Help me. Is he not gonna help me? He's trying to get him. All right, all right come here, come here, come here. I'm gonna help me, man. Yes. Oh my god, big damage. Oh my god, yes. The battle of the knights. I need to kill. Wait, as long as I get the eye, that's what matters. Did I just cheese it? Oh my god, no way. Wait, but I didn't get the achievement. I mean, I could just spawn him in again, you know what I'm saying? So I did get the key and got the guardian knight, and I could have just left, but hey, I decided I'll battle the sentinel knight, but this time I would have to do half the damage, unlike last time. I kind of need the kill. Iron Golem will get him down, he'll probably die. Oh my god, he's kind of doming. Nice, nice, nice. Can you do some more? Nope. Alright, man. Alright, we're gonna make sure we get the W on this one. I hate that my stamina sucks. That was a much needed detour. Dodge! Ah! Heal, 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 heal. Hit him with it, hit him with it. Oh my god. Thank God, Jesus. Oh, I got two Sentinel Swords, oh my God. All right, let's go home. Shout out to Iron Golem, dude. If it weren't for him, oof. There we go, amazing. Even the Sentinel Knight is no match for you. Well, you're approaching the end of your journey. How do you feel? Anyway, you'll need to summon the next Eye Holder. Here, take this knot of hair and the map to its summoning altar. So I think I'm gonna go and search for it, put a waystone, and then get even more prepared. Cause I don't think this is gonna cut it if we just almost died to the Sentinel. I mean, we should have died, but Totem Undying came clutch. So I decided to journey to where the Fire Giant was located, and I did this all night. During my journey, I ran into this boss mob who gave me a powerful wood axe in its own standard. It's such a cool contrast. Blue, red, blue, red. I was born in the dark. On day 86, I still hadn't reached the destination, and while I was journeying, I ran into this like ritual type spot that had a bunch of mushrooms in a circle. Also, I ran into a woodland mansion, so I marked it on the map. Hostile neighbors. And then I ran into a much needed orc camp location. All right, who wants to smoke? It was already approaching nighttime, so I didn't take out many. So then I went to sleep. Yeah, I got one. Okay, I just need one more. We can continue our adventure. There's an eagle. Honestly, I want to see one in real life. A bald, American bald eagle. Look at it go. And on day 87, I continued taking out the orcs within their camp. There's another one. All right, and I'm out just like that. So I got all the orc teeth I needed or British people teeth. Oh, nice. Another one. And during my journey, I ran into some more quicksand snow or quick snow. I guess that's what you would call it. And man, I was stuck there for a while. Thankfully, I did get out. And at last, I made it to the fire giant location. So I added a waystone and then went back home where I completed my quest with Itsuko. Well done. I have no more tasks for you at the moment. Just know that evil is always lurking about. Stay vigilant. And we get a cleric 
guild trade thing. Day D8, I started by trading with the cleric and made some lecterns to give some villagers some jobs. Just give me a quest. That's all I want, man. Oh, yes! Greetings. Care to have a chat? Did you know that you can automate certain processes such as farming or mining by using arcs and alvaro pixies? You can also do it with the create trap. Okay, whatever. But you might need to talk to an engineer to learn how to use it. Are you kidding me? No quest? Just bullshit. Hello, adventure. Can you help me with something? Yes. Could I have one of your spirit orb? All right, next guy. I mean, screw it. This is what it takes. Unlock a bookshelf, man. We'll do it. The structure of this is too complicated. Would you mind giving me another one of the- I can't believe I'm actually about to do this. Ah, young man, you're too gullible. Don't place your trust in someone you've barely talked to. I'll return the orbs to you since I feel bad, but remember this. Not everyone is as nice as me. I got one back. I didn't get both of them back, though. No one wants to give me a quest. They just want to steal from me, man. They my ops. So to explain in modern terms what just happened, I brought crypto coin. Crypto coin ended up being a scam. And then influencer who promoted that crypto coin got caught. So he had to make a public apology and gave part of my money back. So Iron Golem on a lead work, or is that just turning slavery mode on? And then I spotted one of the Iron Golems stuck in the cow pen, so I wanted him to do his job, so I went through the process to get him out. Take that little boost. Yes! Oh my gosh, aren't I a genius? So after doing that, I returned back to Crummerd and got a quest from Sandy just to give 16 iron ingots, so of course I did just that. Thank you. I know I shouldn't be asking adventure to help with resource gathering but i don't have much choice the pillager army is closing in they're coming to the village soon let me know if you want an extermination contract i'll be happy to offer Ooh, extermination so i got another new quest from that lad which was taking out five pillagers yeah if i remember correctly i don't remember cashing in on this but anyways i returned back home went to sleep and on day 89 i started by combining some bows on the anvil i then bought some more arrows and then returned back to shrek's lair because i wanted to find out can i find farm essence. So here's how it went. Ooh, what the hell? Oh, that was easy. I picked up something. Yes! Okay. Alright, we just need to do this two more times. What the f Bro. And unfortunately, on my second run, my boots broke, so bye bye, Frostwalker. I'm actually about to die, unironically. And down he goes. Alright, I'm gonna go home real quick, though. I guess I'll wear the fire protection ones. I just hate having to spend levels to repair it. I'm trying to get my bread up right now. So after repairing my diamond leggings, I went to sleep. And on day 90, I started by taking out some cows. I gotta help the lag. And then return back to farm some more essence. Alright, Shark Slayer, let's run it. I guess enjoy a little montage of farming essence. Now sit down, pussy. I don't have to reach my limit. There is no limit. Finally. Alright, let's go home. Good to know you can farm essence from here. Obviously it's risky, but great risk comes great reward. And with the essence I just got, I decided to upgrade my stamina. The bargain is struck. Okay, so how many times can I roll now? We got one, two... Wait, how do I increase my roll? Number one, someone please tell me that there is a way to upgrade your roll stamina. Apparently there's a potion that does it, so it only does it temporarily, but I still can never find out how to upgrade my roll, because currently I only have two, and that isn't enough, man. Alright, to be honest, I'm just gonna find another dungeon, and we gotta go upgrade our levels exponentially. Anyways, I upgraded my diamond chest plates and decided to go to one of the dungeons I had a waystone inside of, and got rid of the spawners I did not destroy yet. Sit down. So after taking out all the spawners I could find, decided on day 91 to search for a fresh one. To be honest, a puzzle wouldn't hurt either. Wait, I didn't even realize. Can I track one? Oh my god. On my way there, I found this unique house I had not yet discovered, which had ghosts spawning. So I took out the spawners that were inside and got some nice loot. Abacus. I've never seen that, so I'm gonna take it. Crafting blueprint, what are all these things? All right, let's continue on. We got decent novels from here. And then I ran into a pack of church doctors who gave me two essences. All right, riddle me this, Batman. Oh, there's more, oh my God, yes. All right, this is gonna get bad, this is gonna get bad. And after running into another pack of them, I got one more essence and then was up against the maze. Let me tell you, this one is made for you to fail. I needed Reddit to complete this, but here's some rage before I decided to look on Reddit. Dude, I don't know what to do. Dude, is there any f***ing hint? This is actually made for four-year-olds. 
But here's the current's right pattern to hit the button, so I did exactly that, and at last I unlocked the spirit orbs. Totally didn't get this off Reddit. <clears throat> two spirit orbs, baby. On my way out, I ran into more church doctors and got two essence, then found myself a waystone. Oh, mushroom island in there? The shroom takers would love that. Another waystone? What the heck? I don't want to get in the middle of this. Any of the items I can get? Thank you, thank you. And after traveling a bit more, I ran into the next puzzle dungeon. Ah, yes. Sweet revenge. We have six minutes plus our respiration to do this. No, you're kidding me right now. I think I could have broken it, right? Yeah, I'm so dumb. Just to make sure so all of y'all can scream at me. Alright, my bad. Jesus. But anyways, I returned home and with my spirit orbs, I decided to get one more heart. And with my essence, I upgraded my stamina. When I got back home, I pinged a puzzle dungeon, then went to sleep, and on day 93, I started to journey towards it. Midway, I decided to teleport back to the Pillager Mansion since it brought me a lot more closer, and then at last, I made it to the location. Whoa! Oh, cockroaches, man! There's this little parkour section in order to hear the tune of the maze, and then basically you gotta go back up the stairs to replicate that tune, and um, yeah, let's just say I couldn't do it. It. Ah, f this. TP'd back home, and then I drank a mana potion to test if that will give me extra roll. It doesn't, so you're welcome. I then traded with my Fletcher, and on day 94, I traded with Itsuko to upgrade him, and then did some farm animal tings. Mass extinction time, you ready? That should be more than enough. So I was doing all this to get my levels back up, and this time I wanted to upgrade my bow, so I did a little mixing and matching, and then realized, hey, I don't have enough levels. So I did a lot more trading, but this time I bought some wither arrows, and decided to go take out mobs throughout the whole night, and then by day 95, I was able to upgrade my bow at last, so that it can have flame, infinity, and a couple more things. And now I was looking into how to make a rata Tuli, since it gives you a comfort effect which has a lot of benefits to it. So I went out to start collecting some crops and the ones I was missing were tomato and onions. So I went back to one of the dungeons and then was very confused because I couldn't break anything. You can listen to my reaction but fast forward it's because the puzzle dungeon effect was still on me since I straight up TP'd while I was still inside of it so it took a while for it to wear off. I can't mine anything. Tomato vine yes. Roots. We do need that. Oh, I'm gonna log in and log out because it's kind of dumb. Dude, why can't I mine? Yeah, I can do that, but I can't play Minecraft. I can't break it. Oh, I got it though. Yeah, I'm gonna TP to the other one. Maybe it'll fix everything right here. Yep, that's right. I genuinely don't know what to do. I actually just have to go home. Hey, let me sleep. Maybe that'll fix it. I don't know. You are no longer bound by the magical forces. Are you kidding me this was all because of that yeah so that was quite annoying because it just wasted my time we definitely need to get some agriculture going on we don't want to be like north korea now i had everything i needed to make ratatouille so i planted the crops used some bone meal to get an abundant supply of each crop and put it on the cooking pot and during the night I say we get xp by killing mobs for not just xp of course but also get bones for more bone meal so that's exactly what i did for all night long and by day 97 i reached level 15. oh do i want to add a life mending you know yeah so uh, it's kind of dumb to add life mending you don't really want to use your health to repair your weapons there's a reason why the enchantment is in blood red anyways it is what it is and then i looked into how to make a hunter's workshop bench so i started to get all the materials i needed and at last i was ready to craft myself the hunter's workshop that is such a bad spot. How do you use this? Unfortunately, I thought I could put any weapons on there, but I'm gonna assume that it could only be weapons from Blood and Madness. But anyways, you guys in the comments can help me out with that. Well, it's cool to make either way. And then during the nighttime, I used it once more to get some levels. That for me, oh bitch, I reject it. Pick your flower too. A98, I ran into off-brand Wolverine, but actually he wasn't as off-brand because he was so OP and had shielding, so basically he took zero damage from me. So I decided to run away from that battle. And when I got back, used more bone meal to get more crops to create more ratatouille. Rotten tomatoes? Am I certified fresh? All right, let's finish this up and we are gonna go well on our way to take out the prick. So after repairing everything that needed repairing, I was now ready to go back to the fire giant's location. When I got there, I 
why I didn't have uh, water buckets on hand, so I found a source of water, and all I did was wait until the sun began to set. Hey, give me five, man. I don't know how I had those hands on me. Look at me go, dude. I'd go to sleep, and on day 99, the battle between the fire giants would begin. This is the last boss that holds one of the eyes that we need to get to the Ender Dragon. So, let's do this. That's good, I ran away immediately. Newsflash, unfortunately, the start of the battle ended up crashing my game. Sick. So when I returned, the real battle started. Oh, he's coming over. Oh my god. Run! You idiot! I can't run. Did I find the meta? Nope. I did not find meta. I repeat, I did not find the meta. Alright, let's end this. Come on. It's strength too while we're at it. Wait, that- oh, I'm so dumb. Why would I eat that? It just gave away all my effects. Come on. Alright. Ready? Oh, 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 oh. You get me there. This thing like, stop. Hello? What do you mean? I'm in his arena. God. Not the rowy roll. Did I do it? What is he doing? We did it. Oh, well, let's go home and see what our reward is. Well, I'm speechless. This is it, adventurer. You have defeated all the eye holders. You have acquired 12 eyes already? Look for the gateway into the end. God speed you. Oh, well, looks like there's a lot more left to do. Oh, I got another giant knot. Not bad. One, two, three, four, five of the eyes. And we need seven more. Ironic, isn't it? An evil eye guarded by the cleric villagers. From the clerics. So we gotta upgrade our cleric then. So now I was focused on upgrading my cleric with what I had left on day 99. And then found a little loophole to get infinity diamonds from this guy. Wait, I think I just found a loophole. Oh my gosh, I'm a genius. Level up my guy. Perfect to set us up for what's to come. Like and subscribe if you made it this far and comment down below what you want to see next. Thank you to these people for being members of the channel. See ya.